Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the Blueprint feature, which can be found in the Select panel. First of all, we need to show Blueprint. This tab is sometimes by default off, and all we need to do is left click to activate it. Now all we need to do is click on Add Blueprint. This opens up our Blueprint menu. Now I already have a Blueprint that I have preloaded, but we're going to upload our own image. So I'm going to select Upload. It will take me through to a default folder, which uh, I then have this White Tower image in. Now if I select the White Tower by simply left clicking on it, it will automatically add in this Blueprint of the White Tower that I have found. I want to recreate this in Dungeon Fog. Now we have a few options. If we look at it at the moment, each of these grids in the uh, orange is indicating a five foot square. We might feel that this is not big enough for us. We want to change the scale of the image or perhaps we want to rotate the image. We're going to work through a whole series of options that allow us to do that. First and foremost, we've got our rotation tools, which will allow us to rotate the map around as we choose. I'm going to leave it at default position. We can reset the entire translation of everything. It won't make anything happen now, of course, because we haven't changed anything. We can change the map to uh, the correct pixel size. So that's the actual size of the image, which uh, I think you'll agree is a little bit too small to work with. Or we can simply select the image to fill the available square grid. None of this really helps us in terms of really fitting this map in. So we have two options. We can go to Resize Map. That's this tab up here. And we can say Fit Map to Image Size. So now the map would fit to that grid. And then we click on Apply. And it will tell us how big that grid is going to end up being. 19 by 22 squares, which again is still a little bit too small for us. So our alternatives are we can hold the Control button and that will change the grid size. So we can decrease the grid size, make that a little bit smaller, something like that, for example. So I'm holding down the Control button and scrolling with my mouse wheel to change the size of that grid. If I now go to Resize Map and I say Fit Map to Image Size, we'll now see that that smaller grid has been maintained. So we now have more grids across the map. We're now at 25 by 30. So we've got to keep track of that as well, um, folks, in terms of our map size. If I just scroll with the mouse scroll wheel, I can zoom in on the map so I can see where my alignments are sitting. And that's pretty good, where the gaps in the doors are indicating they're about five foot wide. That's maybe about the right size. I'm spitballing here. Alternatively, what you can do if you hold down the space bar, by the way, you can move around the map. So space bar and left click allows you to drag around the map as per usual in Dungeon Fog. What I can also do is if I hold down the Alt key, I can redefine the square sizes. Now I'm just going to zoom in on the map here. Let's say that this is pretty good here at being 5, 10, 15, 20 foot across. But let's say we want to make that slightly bigger. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key. Notice now I get this targeting reticule. And what that allows me to do is is left click and drag out the spacing that I want. So if I want that gap to be significantly bigger, I hold down my left mouse button, I get the targeting grid to be the size I want, and then I let go. What that has now done is that has redefined the grid. So now we can see there's a lot more space between those columns. Everything is much bigger. Again, I'm going to just mouse around here. And all I need to do now is go to Resize Map and say Fit Image to Map Size. And now this map is a staggering 46 by 54 inches in terms of our actual scale. I do feel that probably this is as close as we wanted to get. So now all I do is I simply click on Apply and that will now add it to our map. However, before we go any further, a few things to bear in mind. Once again, all of these blueprints that we're loading up will remain in Dungeon Fog until we actually delete them by simply left-clicking Delete. This does take up some of our storage space that Dungeon Fog has allocated to each of its users, so bear that in mind. If you've got lots of blueprints, you might start running out of space. Also make sure your blueprints are as low quality as they can be so they don't take up too much of that valuable storage space that you have access to. Finally, of course, we can snap to grid. So if I just left click on this map, I can freely move it around the grid uh, without any issues whatsoever. I can position it so that if I want uh, the tower to be right on the edge of the map, or maybe I want it to come in a little bit, we don't need uh, so much space there. Maybe we want a little bit more space there. I click on apply 
And now our blueprint has been loaded up into Dungeon Fog. Holding down control and scrolling allows me to zoom out. We can see that this is here. What is important to realize is that this blueprint is not a layer. It is projected over the Dungeon Fog map. What this means is that when I'm recreating this structure, I can create walls and still see what I'm doing. So to my mind, this looks as if I should be doing this kind of shape. Bear with me, folks. This is where it gets interesting. So six by six and in two and coming down to here. I'm going to make that a separate room there. These old school maps sometimes leave a little bit uh, of room for the imagination. I can see that's where it should have been. I didn't get there, so I'm just going to left click, close that room, reselect the room, select the vertex point and drag it over so it's in alignment. So there is my one room. Now notice that as I zoom in, we can see that space. We can see that that vertex point is still not on point. Let me just move that over one more. There we go. We can uh, start to now work with this. Now these walls are incredibly thick according to this particular scale that we're working in. These are also circular, so I'm just going to make that a circle and make this a circle as we uh, work through this um, to start getting our basic kind of shape. We might have to tweak this a little bit to um, get it to look exactly how we want, but that's not uh, the purview of this particular tutorial. Let's just uh, lower that down a little bit. What we are going to, to now see is if this is too heavy, we can't really see the texture that the room has now got. We can't see the thickness of the walls. We can then come back to our select tool panel and we can again adjust the opacity of the overlay, making it less visible so we can see more of our texture coming through or making it more visible to the point that we can no longer see Dungeon Fog itself. So that's all good and well. That's how you work with blueprints. Something to bear in mind, of course, and this is particularly critical. When you go to the export option, the blueprint is not presented. This is for several reasons. One, it's a copyright protection act that uh, prevents us from sharing other people's maps. But also, that's not why you're using Dungeon Fog. You're using Dungeon Fog to make your own maps uh, or maps based on others. So it is not present in the export. Be aware of that. It is not a fault. It is a design. And that is how you use the blueprint tool in Dungeon Fog.